So the next idea is that you have to assign some kind of measure. And that has two notions. One is you prepare your experiment. So it tells you, you know, I don't prepare exactly some initial state here. I prepare something to give an accuracy. Or if I repeat the experiment a thousand times, I'll be slightly different. So I'll have to do averaging on uh, results. So there is a measure in initial states. But vastly more important for us is that there will be measure which will be time dependent. You know, once we start, dynamics will be needing this thing and mixing it up and doing something. And empirically, if you do computer experiments on chaotic systems, you'll find that this measure, as time progresses, forgets its origins. So this measure converges to something as time goes to infinity, which is called natural measure. Morally, it just means that finite accuracy computer experiment will always produce the same measure uh, if you wait sufficiently long and you collect the statistics. But to make it really honest, you have to understand what you did before here about transitivity, about likelihood. You know, is it possible to go from partition to partition? So this natural measure requires understanding geometry. So you can't just run a computer and use the formulas that I'll give you, because you have to know whether the pieces of information you're using in predicting your average are actually dynamically connected. So. People who publish in Fizzer of Letters, you know, will measure one orbit on the moon and one in uh, Los Alamos, and then they average over the two. And yeah, that's good Fizzer of Letters, but it's you know, a very stupid thing to do. So understanding geometry was necessary to do this. And now what happens is once you understand that it's the dynamics that brings you to interesting state, equilibrium state, or steady state in some sense. It's kind of natural measure. And this measure is easy to understand in one and two dimensions. You can draw pictures and do it numerically. And you'll see it's very complicated, but at least you'll have some idea about it. But we'll use it in infinite dimensional state spaces. So we'll look at turbulent state and we'll say, how likely is this state? Space is huge. Yeah, there's no way in the world you'll be computing this by box binning, and uh, you'll have to get a more sophisticated way of doing it. So understanding this, it means that actually what matters is the evolution. And it's evolution law that designs this thing. And that's why I went through this example in great detail. It's the fact that you have transition matrix which tells you what happens in one step. That's the law of evolution for symbolic dynamics. It says one step I can go from this and that. It's this guy that produced the simple law. So understanding the spectrum of the evolution operator will tell you what can happen. Now, evolution operators are designed to be the differential equations or uh, finite uh, maps, finite time maps. So they're always designed to be short time. Whereas the older stuff on the right hand side is to arbitrary length. And uh, we will be able to use this information to compute that. That's kind of pretty amazing.